What is up guys, Big Doubles back again with a brand new video, and today we are going to finally cap out this series with a level 60 ding on our Goblin Warlock Boom Boy, a childhood dream where I just really wanted to copy Fizzle Darkbang from Duratar, and I was finally able to do it in the custom vanilla context. I'm really excited for this guys, we're gonna try to do as much custom content as we can get on the final trek to level 60. So, hope you enjoy, and let's get into it. Yo, before I start this video, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Why, you might be asking? Well, first of all, because I rarely ask in the way that we're about to ask. But let me say this. I am so close to 50,000 subs. That would be pretty sick, right? Also, it turns out the majority of you guys that watch me aren't actually subbed. Although I'm doing pretty good in this regard, I think we can do even better. So hit that subscribe button for more mostly World of Warcraft content. Thanks, guys. So we begin this journey after the last episode and a lot of custom content having been completed under our belt. We at least went to Lapidus Isle. We went to the Gilligim's Isle and we completed quite a few quests, but we got bottlenecked by a lack of PF quest for the zone and therefore less players in the zone so we couldn't actually do any of the elite quests, for example. One of the very first things I did after my last video is I jumped back into more Hateforge Quarry because I was trying to see if I could get some quests done. There are actually some special quests for Hateforge Quarry. One of the places I learned that you can get quests is actually right at the border between Red Ridge and Burning Steps itself, which is right here on your map, as you can see. And uh, that's where you're going to find a little band of dwarfs who give you a variety of different quests. Now, one of them was actually a quest to give myself a seriously insane ring. That is actually going to be playing into the spec that we use for this video as well. I want to go ahead and show you guys this ring. You can actually see right here, it's called Deep Blaze Signet, seven intellect, and we get 11 base spell damage and 11 fire damage. It's absolutely ridiculous. With that in mind, I ended up going to some more typical places. I went to places like Ungoro, and I also got into a BRD, which ended up being a big mistake. I love the people I played with, but I'm pretty sure this was something along the lines of a three hour BRD run, but I think it was more like five hours. I actually said for the clip that it was a five hour BRD run, but the clips in total are three hours. I think there was a lot of running and waiting and uh, groups disbanding before we even started. And then we actually got into a new group. So it all came together. And I was like, holy crap, guys, this is vanilla. This is freaking vanilla. So I went through the five hour BRD run. Now here's the thing. The people were great and the loot was possibly better because I ended up getting a huge amount of loot drops at level 55 during this run that are going to fundamentally change the power level of my character in obviously huge ways. I had not that much good stuff up until this point, even though I do try to prioritize dungeons and stuff like that. I will show you my character right now. Uh, I picked up the following stuff. Omnicast boots, six stamina, nine intellect, 22 spell damage. We also got the robes of the royal crown. Bro, I got hooked up. 18 more spell damage, 19 stamina, 12 intellect, 10 spirit on that one. Kentic Amice, I think that's how you say that. Five stam, 13 intellect, six spirit, 14 more uh, SP. I actually got so lucky that when the trinket dropped, I can put it up on the screen now, I passed it to the other guy that could have possibly wanted it because I felt greedy almost. I got so lucky uh, while I was in here. We also have a three piece of dread mist right now and we have a charstone dirk, which is good because it lets me finally use my fell flame shard for 13 more fire damage currently with this build. Now guys, another thing I ended up doing was was taking a leap of faith. I listened to a guy who PM'd me right after episode six, and he claimed that he could get me a very cool illusion to turn into a fur bulk, and this could be something that I could do basically anytime I want outside of when I'm mounting. But I didn't quite believe him, yet I also like to take risks sometimes like this, especially fun ones where you just follow somebody the entire time as they lead you, and he led me. He led me all the way up a mountain in Dunmarogue, all the way down all these secret passes. I don't know how he knew this. I don't know if he was, he was going fast enough, by the way, to where I don't feel like he was looking at a map. Maybe he was, but he was going real fast. He led me, he led me so far into Cold Ridge Valley until he led me to the location of the Christmas event, which he told me has been confirmed by the devs that you're allowed to do outside of Christmas if you actually want to run here all by yourself. When I got there, I was able to talk to an NPC who then gave me the Furball illusion, and my friends, it is badass. So big, big shout out to Son of Mace, man. I really appreciate uh, you showing me this. It was cool. I played with it a lot more than I maybe even will end up showing in this video because I think it's sick. And it's one of those things to me, like Noggin Fog, 
Augur Elixir, where I will use it as often as I can, just so I can be and do something different. So that was awesome. I really enjoyed, right after the last episode, just the BRD run, the Furbolg Illusion, and the light questing that I did, right before I ended up showing you guys the Wrath Classic video, and the big news about, uh, you know, certain channels getting taken down. Okay, guys, this is going to be, it's been a while, okay, but this is gonna be level 57. Yo, that's pretty freaking sick. All right, this goblin's giving me a quest now. Noggle's Lost Satchel. So I'm questing in Silithus right now, and uh, it's actually not too bad. You know, I haven't actually been to Silithus very much, and that's because by the time I really started taking WoW serious, Silithus wasn't really required at all to level through. You could skip it so easily, it's not even funny. It actually became irrelevant, and uh, I think that's why I saw it as such. Really, though, it has a bunch of pretty easy quests, and so I've got a few more to do. We'll get those done, and uh, Battle Billy's trying to hunt me right now. He left his helmet on, you know, and he's lagging. So, <laughs> um, okay, it happens, you know what I mean? I didn't change my name for the playthrough. I also sent him a little bit of a troll message, to be fair, but I like my troll messages to have a good message, you know what I mean? Okay, guys, I've got some pretty interesting news. I'm questing in Eastern Plaguelands right now. The whole goal, I think, for this video is going to be to hit level 60 and start doing custom stuff. There's a lot of custom level 60 dungeons that I'd like to try. But that's not it, because I was actually messaged by this guy, and, uh, as you can see, he just gave me some pretty interesting info. You can pause, I guess, and read it ahead of time, but I'll show you guys in a moment. We're gonna try it and see if it works. For now, though, I'm gonna turn this quest in, and we're gonna get to level 58. Okay, guys, here we go. Level 58. Two more levels to go until we finally max out on Turtle Wow. On our freaking Goblin Warlock, which I'd always, always wanted to make. It's nice. It's nice to know that you're not going to have any regrets, even on a small scale. You know what I mean? Now, another thing I wanted to show you guys, look at this map. Look at all this Arthas tier I have right here. This is insane. Like, the bunchings of herbs is ridiculous sometimes. We probably will hit max level before we max both of those professions. But like I said in previous videos, we're max first aid, max cooking. I mean, it's going to be okay. The real thing is going to be to just find specific things I'd actually want to craft through alchemy. And then just actually gun for that, whatever level that might be and it might be max we'll see then the other thing to do is think about what herbs make the most money and then just you know go for those if i have the level for that it doesn't really matter if i max because i'll get max eventually and that's more of a long-term thing because i think the way this series is going to work is that this video is technically going to be the finale video for the turtle wow series because we hit max level and i'll do some max level custom content at least one hopefully we can fit in more though as well but there could be more content in the future they've got a scarlet monastery raid that's going to be coming out probably in a couple or a few months time if i had to guess we might not do every custom dungeon like i said so we're gonna have to come back for them so don't fret there could be and probably will be an episode eight and nine and possibly as soon as literally this month i just don't know it depends what's going down with ascension with wrath classic even all these other things i will say i put up the wrath classic video and i talked to you guys about some youtube -y, uh private server news and uh that video did way better than i probably wanted it to i might even remove that video just because there's not going to be any point for somebody to see that video like a month or two months from now like it's relevant now but of course you'll still have all the videos where i talk about it in the video itself and mention it because you know what no blizzard devs ever gonna get 20 minutes into one of my videos on purpose dude true and yeah that's pretty true now another very interesting thing to keep in mind is i think they've changed talents because i know i mentioned this in a previous video and i lamented on the idea that it was at 70 percent chance to not lose casting time now 91 percent chance but it's a very interesting change they still want to give you a small percent chance of just getting rng'd out in pvp because again for pve nothing like this actually matters right this is like a pvp in an open world thing so what it means is that before 30 percent chance that you're going to get interrupted in a really dramatic way and your spell's not going to go off while they're jumping behind you and stuff like that. But now it's a 9% chance. 9% basically means it's like missing uh, if you didn't have a hit cap or something. I don't know. I'm trying to make it make sense in that regard as well. But it's a lot better. It's definitely good. You're not going to get a casting time reduction very often with your fire spells. I like that. I'm curious. I don't think they changed this one, did they? No, they didn't. So there's something about the destruction one in particular that's better than the average one. I think that's good because it is limited to fire spells. Once upon a time, I think in normal vanilla, it was limited to very specific spells, but they actually buffed it to all fire spells. I'm going to end up having two talent points left, I believe. I'll be able to go into pyroclasm for the stun. And I'm back to a destruction spec, guys. I'm back for the con flag. Uh, I'm not going hard into the searing pain this time though instead 
said, I just took all of the main things you would expect me to want. I got the uh, improved corruption. I've got the improved life tap, which I really like. Improved imp for dungeons and stuff like that. Uh, fell intellect, because why not? I could go improved void walker for the open world, but a little greedy, I guess. And we have master conjurer as well. That's a pretty good open world PvP spec by my estimation. Look at that 1117 con flag crate. We're starting to move up in the world, boys. I'm going to kill these freezing ghouls. Turn in this other quest I got right here as well. But yeah, we could go to Ungoro, but I basically finished all the quests there that are actually good. <laughs> like, there's a bunch of doggy ones, man. There's Winter Spring. Okay, I could go to Winter Spring. I gotta run there, though, and that means I have to go to Fellwood, which I have literally no f flight points for. It's gonna be a long run. All right, I killed the diseased wolves. Let's go ahead and tell this guy who's been dead in this building, kind of, for, like, uh, years at this point. I don't know. Let's go tell him. Okay, now he wants me to kill eight diseased grizzlies. Okay, so I've still got stuff to do around here. What I am doing, though, as we do these quests is I'm queued for AV. It says 18 minute average wait time. So what I'm gonna do is wait for this to happen, and when it does, we'll see if we can make some crazy XP gains happen with that guy's advice. Okay, so uh, turns out it works. So if you did pause, uh, you will already know what I'm doing. If you did not, I'll go ahead and tell you what that guy was trying to tell me. So he claimed that you could queue for AV and you could go to, I'm assuming, either of the mines, Iron Deep Mine and or Cold Tooth Mine. And he, as a prop pally, was getting 180,000 XP an hour just killing these guys in the mines. And you might say, what makes them special? Well, as you can see, they count as a level 53 elite mob but it only has 981 HP, and some of them have about 1100, 1200 as well. Super, super easy to kill. So as an example, I roll up on this Geomancer, I sick my imp on it. I kill that guy, I run away real quick, I charge up the Howl of Terror, let's just say, because they do big damage. I could die, you would think, but no. Not today. All right, go for the immolate. Boom. Now we have one more guy to kill, so let's sick the imp on him. I'm just gonna wait for a conflag, to be honest with you. Right here, he's gonna die. There we go, and level 59. So I literally just got level 59, and for 75% of this, I farmed AV. Now, I'm not getting the XP per hour that he's getting on my own. I'm getting 109, 110k, and that is pretty consistent. So it's still good, though, because look how much XP I need to level. 209,000. So you're literally saying it's gonna take two hours, like it's saying, time remaining, one hour, 54 four minutes just to get to 60 yeah killing mobs yeah it's insane i don't think as many people know about it but a decent amount of people do because i've encountered other people here already and so they are well aware of the xp gains not as many of them have my diligence though they had to give up after a little bit it was too frustrating i'm going to stay and i'm not going to leave until i get to level 60 because i think this might be the most brain dead and easy way to do this so i'm pretty excited guys one hour and 51 minutes away means this video is actually going to go out on saturday which is really really big all i need to do once i hit 60 is find some of the custom stuff to try it like uh, all the dungeons i keep alluding to look at that level 60 guys we did it we literally did it farming in the mine in cold tooth mine in av for the last couple levels and it was ridiculous xp i think the highest i did was something around 150,000 xp an hour I really couldn't be happier with that. That's just great, guys. So again, the next goal is going to be finding one of the brand new custom dungeons, and there's all sorts of different ones that we could try. I'm not going to be too picky because I don't even know how hard they are, uh, but if I can find one, I'm going to do it ASAP, no matter what it is. Okay, now that we're level 60, I am not doing that BG probably ever again if I can avoid it at this point. Uh, that was taking forever, but it does give you so much time just to get XP. 12 seconds later. Okay, guys, we are getting ready to do Karazhan Crypts a custom dungeon on turtle wow this is a max level custom dungeon i have never even seen it done or anybody even advertising for it and we already have a full group okay doing the ritual of summoning there we go it's not bugged it actually was bugged i had to log out so it would work again so that's why they're happy okay here it is guys going on the left hand side of the karazhan raid and there we have the meeting stone for karazhan crypts okay i've been waiting for this for a while because after gila gems and lapidus there was a lot less custom stuff we still actually were able to find some stuff and of course we we are playing a spec with custom stuff as well but this is it man like this is what i want to show this is something that not a lot of people can do right now because you have to go through the whole 1 to 60 journey on vanilla wow in order to get there wait a second guys look at this i want to show you guys the loading screen it was that cool okay look at this oh that's amazing looking so we are in the well of the forgotten dude the cares and crypts dungeon this has always been something that was never touched holy crap this is so hype oh oh no 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 How was I supposed to know? All right, I'm releasing my spirit. I'm sorry about that, guys. I really am. Did I mention I'm going into this completely blind? Oh my god, you res right on top of it. How OP. Okay, so 
Now we're back, the Well of the Forgotten. Apparently there's some bats right here, so let your tank go in there and thunderclap or consecration first or start swiping. I don't know, man. Yo, this guy just said, focus the big elite during the bats. The little bats don't do anything and they're just there to troll you. Damn it, dude. At least we know. Look, I thought I was useful for one second with the hellfire, but it's okay. Dude, we fell down the pit. I just fell down the pit. It was pitch black looking in the pit. I didn't even realize you could fall down. This guy literally died falling down the pit. <laughs> Dude, yes. Wow, I can't believe they did this, guys. We are going to be checking out this whole thing. All the loot's going to be a surprise. But at the end, I will check Atlas loot. And uh, we'll see. I don't know if it'll even show me everything. But if that's an option, we'll do that as well. But this is sick. Where's my little boy? Oh, here's Belly App. Dude, this guy's been with me since the very beginning. Okay, so we're starting to fight Skeletal Remains. And we also have the Unseen Stalker as well. Now, we're partied up, as you know, with two priests and two warriors. Okay, so we're focusing the Unseen Stalker right now. I'm looking at every everybody's HP and stuff. Everything seems to be relatively fine. Okay, we're already getting green drops, by the way. Plentiful green drops. Interesting. Look at my imp in the wall, dude. Like, what is even happening? Risen Crypt Guard over there patrolling. All right, so we're going on this guy as well. And I don't know if you noticed, but the music in the background is literally the music that plays when you're dead and you're near a spirit healer. Okay, we've got triple dot and I'm just going to go for the con flag. Actually, 555 con flags right now. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, we're going down the corridor now. On the right, there's a shadow blade specter. 15,000 HP and a possessed axe. Oh my god. Ooh, a traveler's backpack drop. Somebody needed on it. I'm gonna need on it too. I've actually got another one already. So this is three traveler's backpacks now, which means very soon I'll have four traveler's backpacks. That's actually a momentous occasion on vanilla, you know? All right, here we go. Marrow spike. He's just going straight in, guys. We've got the imp on him. I'm gonna go for three dots, but he resists my curse of agony. I got the corruption up. Now we've got the curse of agony up. Uh, let's go for a handy dandy soul fire. I do have 10% more fire damage and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm just gonna do it. And that's a 970 soul fire. Just gonna go for the shadow bolt now. We are getting resisted pretty heavy. So I guess I'm not hit capped if that's a thing right now for casters. All right, we're going for a shadow bolt, hoping to finish him off. Can I get it? I did. Nice. Okay, so I did actually end up getting a soul shard. What did he drop? Bone wall. 2206 armor. Wow. Five strength, seven stamina, five shadow resistance, and seven defense. That's actually amazing. Congrats to that guy. Man, I'm just happy people are getting things and they're probably very excited about it because I know I'm going to be if I get something. Okay, so we're apparently not going down towards that other guy that we pointed out earlier. We're going to go back towards the main room. All right, a lot of green stuff, guys. That's really important to point out. Lots of green stuff drops. It just feels like it's more than normal for some reason, which is good. All right, the pit of criminals. Uh, we go up the stairs and there's a room. This is so nice and fleshed out. All right, dude snuck up behind us. Literally, the unseen stalker sneaks up behind us. Makes sense. So one thing to keep in mind since this guy is actually talking about difficulty right now uh is that this is not that hard i don't know if the people in my party are like crazily geared this guy is about the same as me so that's one thing to keep in mind uh one of the warriors he is pretty well geared but it's not like he's an epics or anything so okay uh then we have let's see i think this is the healer okay this person is freaking intense this person is really good at the game okay so that's probably part of the carry we have an op healer i think tank is very similar yeah he's really good as well i think the cool thing about warlock is like i guess life tapping too much is obviously not a good thing but if you go out of mana it doesn't matter how you play like i'm going all in with the con flags right now and the soul fires and stuff i could just life tap and get all my mana back the inefficiency is not as deep as it was for like say my elemental shaman once upon a time oh my god the spider webs are everywhere this is really well designed i think it's interesting that every new dungeon i go to ends up being more awesome than the one i played before like crescent grove was really cool but then i saw hate forge quarry and i was like okay crescent grove is cool but hate forge quarry this is really nice uh now i'm like oh, you know what both of those are pretty cool but dude karazhan cribs is sick i think there's something more important about it as well and that's the fact that it's max level content which means uh there is possibly gear here that completely shakes up your pre bis journey possibly even beyond all right we're just gonna go for the drain soul round ourselves out get those soul shards nice more greens. Now, I will say I'm up to 242 alchemy and 261 herbalism. So we've done pretty well in that regard. We didn't max them before we became max level. Uh, oh, by the way, second boss, Hyvaxis. Let's go ahead and uh, triple dot. But it's okay that we didn't max those out because once again, we're going to prioritize what we actually need with those things when we play. So I'm going to look up recipes, for example, that I might need. I'm just going to stop at whatever level I can make them at, whatever they may be. As for herbalism, I'm going to try to figure out what the very best stuff I can possibly get would be. You know, the stuff that would make me the most money, basically. And then I'm just gonna gun for that kind of stuff and if I can already pick it then I'm good if I have to max it out Then I'll do that as well, but it's gonna max itself out over time as well All right, we're just gonna end once again with a drain soul hive axis dead doesn't seem like it was too difficult. Ooh, dark soul band Wow nine spirit six mana and six health per five 
which is basically what spirit does anyway. Uh, I'm going to greed on that. I don't need that. Interesting one, though. Okay, now we're actually going in the water, and there's undead frenzy fish in the water, guys. Uh, I don't like water in scary places in video games. It's actually a weird thing about me. It happened in my childhood. I used to play Spyro the Dragon, and there was an underwater level on Spyro where there were sharks. And for some reason, that level terrified me. Because the sharks would always eat you. And it scarred me with water, man. I'm still fine. I can swim and all that jazz. I'll be okay in here. But every time I think of water in games, now I'm like, yeah, I don't think I want to be a part of that unless I really have no choice. Okay, so we're swimming all the way underwater right now. And I just thought about this. Uh, everybody needs... Don't, you know, die under the water, water breathing, basically. Holy crap, this is terrifying. Like, I've actually been here before, I think, but uh, there was nothing here, obviously. Okay, if you get out of the water, you're okay, or no, what, huh, what? Excuse me? Excuse me, what? Okay, the team disappeared for a moment, and I don't know where they went, but they did end up coming back, and maybe they're OP enough, basically, to carry us through this, because me and another priest died. Okay, both priests are dead. Okay, OP tank is dead. Damn it, we actually wiped in Karazhan Crips. But once again, you're right next to it when you die, so it's super quality of life for this one. This is so crazy, because when I first got in here, I thought we were going to go through this gate, but the gate, you don't go through, you go right here, and then you're like, oh god, right? Um, pretty terrifying. And we're just gonna back into it. Fall down, and we're right back where we were, guys. Oh my god. Okay, we're back under the water. Water breathing is on all my pals, man. Being a useful warlock feels good. I never thought I'd be fighting undead frenzy fish in the depths of a really, really creepy ass dungeon. Doing things you literally never thought you'd get to do. I don't think Blizzard's ever gonna make Karazhan Crips, man. I think this is the only opportunity in my life that I'll get to say, yeah, I did experience that. That's cool. Okay, so instead of going back towards that Gort boss, apparently we are, uh, gonna swim this way, which I didn't even recognize, and there's a guy called Corpse Muncher over there, dude. Well, that can't be a good thing. What is that? Dude, that thing is huge! Is this a raid or is this a dungeon? Oh my god. Okay, guys, here we go. Corpse Muncher the boss, 44,000 HP. Sicking the imp on him with the triple dot. No resist so far, which is nice. Uh, and he's just swinging all the way around, man, whipping it. Just whipping his hair back and forth, dude. All right, I'm going for the Shadow Bolt spam. And then uh, when he's low on the ammo, I go for the Conflag, as you just saw as well. So we're back on the Shadow Bolt spam with the Immolate back up. And I have two seconds. Now we have a Refreshed Corruption. And then I'm going to go for the Shadow Bolt and then go for the Refreshed Curse of Agony. Boom. Okay. Another Shadow Bolt as well. And then we're going to go for the Conflag after a Life Tap. But I am able to keep up with the Life Tap. So there we go. I think he's dead. Bam. Boy, howdy. This critter put up some sort of fight. What do we get? Deep Earth Signet, oh, increases healing done by 24. That's amazing, though. That's a crazy, crazy good healing ring, I think. Okay, now we're properly going for Guard Captain Gort. He also has 45,000 HP that time, triple dot. And we're just gonna go for the Shadow Bolt spam. All right, what do we hit? That's 975 that time. Yo, that's amazing. Okay, he was a pretty easy fight as well. Let's see what he drops. Okay, he's dead. Let's see. Naturalist Wristbands, Leather 6 Intellect, 11 Spirit, 29 more healing. If a druid was here right now, they would have literally already been good, man. That's like so many good items for them. For a resto druid at least, right? Okay, so as we progress past the dirt mounds, there is another corridor leading into another room and a lot of risen crypt guards as well. These guys are actually really beefy. Like, these guys are taking a lot to die right now. I will say that. Luckily, this group is just bulky. Just naturally very bulky, I think. But I could see this posing a threat. Yeah, so it leads to a giant room and uh, I just realized... The Lich also has their own cat, just like Kelthu's ad. But this guy's cat's name is Midnight, and you can kill it. Stop giving me the option to kill cats. I'm just going for the Reign of Fire spam right now. I didn't buy my abilities yet for level 60. I mean, I went gung-ho straight into this brand new dungeon, man. Uh, so, you know what? I could be doing a lot more damage with my spells. And luckily, we actually are at 55 gold. I've been, you know, just doing me, and uh, my gold has stayed relatively high. I've made much better decisions than I did when I was on my Classic Shaman. I felt like I was poor constantly on my Classic Shaman. But that also says something about me becoming a pirate, getting 20 gold for being a pirate, all the quest rewards. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things with Turtle that does make it a lot easier than Vanilla WoW, not to mention the Turtle Mount early on as well. One thing I'm thinking about doing is doing a 1 to 60 review, just a quick review video for Turtle WoW, but let me know in the comment section below if that's something I should do. Now that I've actually hit 60, it feels like it would be a better review than what a lot of people have done, because as far as I can tell, nobody's hit 60 and made a review video. Yeah, I know this guy's pointing out the cat as well. Okay, thank God that we're not attacking it. 
We'll see if anybody here is a bad person. You'll know immediately by whether or not they kill this guy. So I think you can actually use all this stuff to dodge uh, fears and freezes. Dude, like crazy aggro problems right now. I don't think it's aggro problems. I think it's mechanics. Like I'm frozen right now. I just realized too. I'm stunned actually and taking frost damage. I don't think we have a way to dispel. Oh no, we do. Thank God dispel magic just came out. Of course we have a way to dispel. We have two priests. Hello? Dispel magic. Lol. Holy crap. Okay, so finally the dispels came out and now we're actually recovering pretty well, I would say. Okay, he's actually gonna die. Arklich and Kraz. GG. I think this is the last boss. Shroud of the Arklich. Oh, man. 10 intellect, 1% crit. But you know what? I don't think that's as good as my Veil of Hatred. Isn't that crazy? I got this from Hateforge Quarry, and this comes from a level 60 dungeon. All right, they're telling me to take it. I will take it. I don't think it's as good as what I have, but I will just hold on to it. Maybe you can let me know if that 1% crit's actually worth. But yeah, I think we're still continuing in this dungeon unless we're fighting our way out right now. Okay, more green drops. Oh my God, did you guys just hear that scream? Why? Why do you have to do that? It's nighttime for me right now. So one big plus I will give to Turtle Wow after trying so many of their custom dungeons is that they're all pretty long. So one thing I think a lot of people might think is they're going to go into a custom dungeon. It's going to be like one or two bosses. You know what I mean? Uh, bare minimum effort. None of this felt like bare minimum effort at all, or even minimum effort. They're all very large, lots of mobs, lots of mechanics, even though we are steamrolling them right now. But yeah, I think we just have to go into every single one of these areas and just kill everything in there and just uh, activate all the runes. Dude, they have cursed blades look how cool that is it's literally a invisible dual wielder it's actually going to be a night elf model you can actually tell okay so we went into every single room we activated all of the little runes and now i'm being led somewhere else okay we're on our way up guys i can only imagine that up here is going to be the final boss oh my god alarus I think this is it. The Crypt Watcher is what they call them. 45,000 HP. Okay, and that's like an old school necromancer. You're actually going to see those in Wrath of the Lich King, and they're modeled off the ones from Warcraft 3. So let's do it, guys. All right, triple dot on this guy. I think he's immune to shadow is what they told me, actually. So we're going to go. It doesn't look like it so far, though. I think I'm just spamming Emily. Oh, I just got turned into a Curse of the Plague Rat. So I'm a Plague Rat right now, inflicting 500 nature damage every two seconds. Oh, to nearby allies. I wonder if this guy knows. He just stood next to me. Okay, there we go. 700 burst right there going back for the immolate. I'm actually doing damage with Shadow, so I don't think he's immune. Maybe he was once upon a time, but he's taking damage. Okay, he died. Oh my god, dude. Cover of the Necromancer. A hat. I have a crap hat. I mean, it's a good one. Thank you to the guy that gave it to me, but you know, for level you know, 60, right? Look at that. 30 extra damage. 17 spirits weird, though. That's amazing. And then we also have Bane Forge Legging. Plate Leggings, 1% crit, 23 strength. Wow. It has spirit too, which is not actually that weird. Let's see what it looks like. I can't put it on yet. Dude, I'm so happy right now. Let's kill all these tomb bats with a well-placed hellfire. And then we'll call it a day. Uh, maybe actually go for another dungeon. I don't know. And we survived killing all of the tomb rats. Deja vu. All right, what does it look like? Oh, oh God, it's amazing. Oh my God, it's amazing. Look at <laughs> Yes, dude. Oh, man. Yeah, that's going into the thumbnail, dude. I'm remaking the thumbnail just so I can show this. Beautiful, man. GG. So what do I think of Kara's End Crypts overall? First impressions, um, extremely well made. The gates do open at the very end, by the way, so that's a nice little touch. Um, I think that it's probably relatively hard. I think it was about an hour that we were in here overall, if I'm just going off how long all of my clips are total, but we could say maybe a little over for prep time and everything like that as well. It's a relatively long dungeon. Um, again, medium to high difficulty, and that's just a guess. We did steamroll it, but I'm also fresh, and since I was capable of doing this while fresh at all, I think that's, you know, pretty significant. And my friends, um, I would recommend that you guys try that. If you have a level 60 or you're even like high level on Turtle right now, this is something to be excited about. This helmet is probably one of the happiest moments for me right now. I get excited over like brand new models and stuff like that. I mean, nobody uses this helmet. I've never seen this, man. And now it's a max level item giving me 30 spell damage right now. Way better than what I had. And I'm just happy to have it, man. Guys, we actually did Razor Fen. Crawl or Downs. Can't remember which one. I think it was Downs with this guy in like episode three or two. I think it was three. Uh, this is an OG and we did beat him to max, but you know what? I don't have a life. So, so I'm pretty happy guys. I, I don't know if you can tell. Currently I'm running the stone art flying to burning steps. I believe it is something like that. And, uh, then I'm going to be escorted by my pals here and they're going to take me to Stormwind, where I'm going to try the brand new Stormwind vaults dungeon as a horde player. So you know what guys, the fun keeps on going. We've got plenty of new things to try.
Okay guys, so down here on the most southern western part of Burning Steps is Dracodar, which I don't remember from the main game, I do think this is custom, and uh, he's leading me towards the mountainside now from this little village. It's very interesting. You can get a good look at it from up here. It's just a nice little village with some weird dragon men over here, okay? But he's trying to get me to Stormwind Vaults, and so now we're at the very top of this mountain right here. Oh man, it's gonna jump into Northshire, isn't it? And we are at my Northshire Renegades guild base. Now, I've heard from a lot of people that they use this for quite a lot of things. One of the things people use it for is the griffin that was hard-coded into this game to be a mount for like 30 seconds can actually be used to fly over the mountains into Stormwind to get the Stormwind vaults easier. So let's do it. My guild base is so good. It's a mainstay of the server, man. It's literally a mainstay so that you can actually... Look, I'm on a griffin as the horde. One thing to keep in mind, though, is it's not Kata, so there's no flying guards. It's towards the bottom left part of the gate, I think. Oh, God. All right, this is just as far as we can make it, I think. Oh. Oh, is this where the entrance is? Look at this! Dude, I thought it was in the city! Look at Stormwind Vaults, man. A little- Oh my god, Elwyn Forest has an instance that's not stocks. Dude, that's actually one of the coolest things I've seen yet. Let's do it. Oh, it's like stocks. Oh my god, but look at the mini-map. It's huge. Okay, Stormwind Vaults, man. Okay, so if you back out, it puts you into Stormwind and gives you two quests for Stormwind Vaults that even the Horde can do. So there's another way in, and it's right here. So I think it leads you to the same entrance, though. So I guess that way outside was literally made for the horde so they thought about it i was like damn another instance the horde can't do they thought about this one so well i don't think that's the normal human male model either by the way i actually think that's something different look at their posture and the way they attack yeah i think that's something different okay there's grelkin sorcerers and mana crazed grells in here as well very interesting mob choice right as you can see they actually have a lot of hp and uh, it does actually take a while for these things to die. They're casting Frostbolt, though. And I can see this guy going up and down. That's a lot of damage they're doing, man. Okay, this guy says this wing is the worst wing, and most people skip it. So far, it's been nothing but Grelkin. They take forever to die, and their magic is very strong. They all have different things. Some guys are Frost-based, some guys are Fire-based. I like it. All guys are slapping, though. That's a problem. Oh my god, my first over 1k Shadow Bolt crit. Yo! My first one. Now, I am banishing people when we pull more than uh, three plus is what they said to do. So, and I'm loving every moment. Yeah, the banish is really what's helping to carry. I mean, also the tank and the healer, but the banish definitely feels good. It feels effective. So that's another cool thing as well, because like how many times were warlocks using banish in vanilla? I don't know. It could be a lot. I'm thinking about the demons and I'm like, I don't know if there's that many though. So this is another dungeon where it's like, hey, warlock, you have another reason to use banish. Because typically utility is kind of thought of as like a PVP thing as far as I'm concerned. Break the mold, you you know? So at the end of this corridor, by the way, I do see an ogre, and it's a boss. His name is Thamgrar. Look at this dude's goggles, man. Literally so crisp right now, it's not even funny. All right, guys, very first boss, Thamgrar. Let's see. Let's go for the triple dot. Let's see what item he drops. This is probably the most important part, of course. Uh, it looks like he's a big axe-wielding guy, but he has the model of more of a mage. Oh my god, he's doing huge damage right now. Do you hear the music, by the way? I think it's unique. It's pretty interesting. I like it. It's really dramatic. It's like, holy crap, it's happening right now, dude. All right, what'd he drop? Ring of Twin Regeneration. Oh, increases damage done by 11. Huh. All right, the priest won, but it's okay. Okay, now we have a boss, Azosh Grimflame. Okay, interesting caster looking guy. Gives me Skolomance vibes. Halfway dead, dude. He summons Risen Lackeys, by the way. He casts Corruption and he Mind Blasts people. So interesting combination of Warlock and uh, Shadow Priest stuff, plus Necro. But this one seems to be one of the easier bosses we fought so far. All right, let's see what do you got. Greaves of the Elite Guard. Wow. Wow, dude. Really good tank stuff with 20 stam, 8 defense, 15 block value. Are you guys hearing this hyper intense music right now? Because I'm hearing it and it's pretty sick. I really like it. Like, all the custom music has been very spot on. Also, I just want to point out, the Risen Husk guys, the Soulless Husk, actually, is actually a undead model, man. Something weird, though. Some undead model that attacks with its claws. Okay, guys, there's a demon girl in here, like a banshee, and her name is the Black Bride. So we're gonna kill her and see what she drops. Okay? Sightless Leather Hood. First Agi drop I've seen. 1% crit, 1% hit. Wow, and 17 Agi. It's pretty cool looking, too. All right, now we're leading up into a room with Sh Shadow Creepers. Guys, this has been a really long dungeon as well. Okay, we're about to pull up on yet another boss, Damien. Okay, he just went invisible. Where is he? He appeared behind the uh, healer. Holy crap. Oh, he went invisible again, guys. He's gone. And there he is. He's appearing behind somebody. And I think he backstabs them. That's interesting. This guy has taken a really long time to kill, actually. But just like every boss that came before him, he's about to get rocked. GG. What do you drop? Oh, wait, he went invisible. <laughs> 
Okay, there you go. Cloak of Atonement. Oh my god, more... Wow, that's a really good healing cloak, guys. 11 intellect, 8 spirit, 26 healing done. Wow. Okay, this may or may not be the last boss. Vulcan Cruel Blade. My demon actually died right prior to this fight, so... Okay, so he has something as well where he teleports behind a target. 1149 crit, by the way. I think he's punching, by the way, and he's thunderclapping as well. Time between attacks increased by 100%. Holy crap, thunderclap on steroids, man. Okay, what do you drop, Vulcan? What are you gonna give us? The Cruel Blade. Two-handed polearm. You attack all nearby enemies for nine seconds, causing weapon damage, plus an additional five every three. So like Ravager, but you also get 1% crit 18 stam. Wow. Oh, it's pretty cool looking too. Remember, I'm a goblin, so I'm really tiny, but like on somebody like this guy, I bet it's pretty big. That's pretty cool. It's the first two-handed weapon I've seen, so. Okay, we're going into some icy area now. All right, last boss. Okay, this is the last boss's name. Arcturus. Holy crap, look at this room, guys. Look at this. It's some kind of icy gem. It says down there, the Glacier of Madness. Nuke the crap out of it, okay. Still don't have my demon, just got a power infusion put on me, though. So I have increased spell damage. Let's just go for the soul fire lol into the con flag. Soul burn? Or shadow burn, rather? Oh, I just got mind controlled. I'm charmed right now. Holy crap. Arcturus vocalizes a chilling chime. All right, so we have to just stay on the main boss, right? Go for the con flag. I gotta get all my dots back up. Curse of Agony right there. I'm charmed again. He keeps charming me very specifically. And that's not good, but okay, it's making me cast really garbage spells. So that's actually really good. This guy is gonna die. We're gonna beat the last boss, man. Stormwind Vaults. Let's see what we get. Oh, I'm so excited, please. Look at this boss. This is crazy. All right, Arcturus slain, so the quest is done, but I don't see anything. Oh, maybe it's in this chest right here. Vault armory equipment. Okay, here's what dropped. Vigilance, the crossbow. That's really freaking sick. Guard captain's chest plate. Wow, man. Tank gear and a fashion coin. Wow. Well, I don't need any of this, so I'm not going to be rolling on it, but that is really cool stuff, man. Another crossbow. What's it look like? Oh, it's like golden. It's more like wood. GG, guys. What a freaking amazing little area. This one's also a pretty long one. And I've got to say, super unique. It is not just like stockades at all. There's so many interesting rooms with their own little themes, like a frozen room and uh, the human area where it's like people that are all guarded up. It's so cool. So I do just want to go back into the final boss room. You know, you've got the mist, the icy mist. And uh, if you didn't know the nuke the boss down or you didn't have enough DPS to do it, you could get swarmed here and just completely get wrecked. By the way, both quests done, and I'm max level, so it's not about the XP here. This one gives five gold. This one gives, oh, regal gold-threaded sash. 23 spell power, nine intellect, six spirit. Right now, I've got my dread miss belt, but this one's better. It has that spell damage. Wow. Wow. It also offers gold-plated royal crossbow. That's really, really strong. I think actually intellect on it's interesting. And a golden gauntlets of storm one. What does that look like? Whoa, that's actually beautiful. So yeah, we can turn that in too. That's really good. Okay, guys, we did it. Two max level dungeons here, guys. Um, <laughs> We did it with style with a dude with a thunder fury and uh, the same group of people. Great guys, really good at the game. And uh, I was really happy that we were able to get through all of this stuff and actually try all these bosses and try all this custom loot. Level 60, guys, we actually did it. And I think... Black Morass was disabled, and that's going to be another custom dungeon that I could do as well. And so, yeah, another thing to look forward to is Scarlet Monastery, as I said earlier in the video. So we did it, man, and we came out of it with some good loot as well, which I'm pretty happy about. I mean, as we're leaving, you could see there was, like, the bug room as well. It's so interesting. It's such a massive dungeon. How long did this one take me? Probably about 45 minutes, if I had to guess. <laughs> Okay, let's turn both these quests in, by the way. Runic Shackle, boom. And then a Regal Gold Threaded Sash, boom. Yes, welcome to Stormwind, man. Thank you. So I could toss this on too, and we have so much more spell power than we've ever had before, guys. Massive upgrades in this video. Super happy with how it went. But listen, guys, that is going to be the end of this video. We're going to end it in Stormwind. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. Episode 7, theoretical end to the official 1-60 to Boom Boy series, uh, where we finally made it to max on a Goblin Warlock. You know what? It took us like a little over a month or something like that, but I'm very happy with the progress. And uh, once again, get us up to 50,000 subs, guys, because we're really, really close. I'll see you in the next one. Me doubles out. Yeah.